Ah, if only it was easy enough to study for school. If only we can complete the task we wanted to get done without getting distracted, and now we can just stay focused. What does it really take to focus on our work, to get that revision done using our limited time, resources and energy? How can we make the most out of our days and how can we find fulfillment in our study? In this video, I'm going to talk about how I've been able to stay focused during university for my degree whilst also being part of the Filipino Society community and whilst posting on YouTube every week. The concept that I want to talk to you about today is called flow. Flow is a state of mind in which a person becomes fully immersed in an activity. Before I knew there was such a thing called flow, I always thought about this as getting in the zone or getting the ball rolling. But after I knew this was called flow, those phrases like getting in the zone had a completely new weight to them and that's when things started to make sense. The state of flow was coined by a psychologist in the 1960s by a guy called Mihai Chingsing Mihai. Since then, the research done in this topic is actually mad and take a look for yourself. McKinsey did a 10 year study, they found that motivation and productivity can go up 500% in flow, 500%. Uh, creativity, and this is work done at the Flow Research Collective. Some was done at the University of Sydney, some was done at Harvard. Um, we see creativity spike 400 to 700%. Uh, learning, depending on whose numbers you're going by, the Department of Defense did some work. They found learning spikes 230% in flow. Other studies were done where they were taking uh, novice marksmen and training them up to the expert level in 50% less time in flow. Uh, cooperation, collaboration go through the roof empathy and ecological awareness, which is your ability to perceive the natural world go through the roof. And I think most importantly, and we know this really clearly, it's one of the most clearest findings in psychology, in the history of psychology, is the people with the most flow in their lives are the people who score off the charts consistently for overall well-being, life satisfaction, meaning, and happiness. So if forget peak performance, you want life satisfaction, meaning, happiness, well-being, just simple like I want to enjoy my life, this is the best pathway. After watching that video from Matt Diavella last year and watching other videos like from Anas Nu Ali, love, love those two guys, I realized that I was also experiencing flow when it comes to me studying or me in doing leisure activity, me playing basketball and me managing this YouTube channel. All right, now that we know that in order to stay focused for long periods of time, we need to be in a state of flow. How do we actually get in that zone? One of the best ways to get into the zone is to produce dopamine. Dopamine is one of those feel good chemicals and you've, you've experienced dopamine. You know when you've watched a movie or like an anime series or whatever and they leave you by a cliffhanger. That's dopamine. Now let's go deeper. How do we induce dopamine in our own bodies on purpose? From my personal experience, there has been five relevant flow triggers that I've been using throughout my school life, university, sixth form, you name it. And that is risk, novelty, complexity, pattern recognition, and purpose dash clear goal. Let's talk about risk. You know when you've procrastinated and you've left things to the last minute, that risk of missing your deadline is what induces the dopamine and pretty much forces you to study and to study and to study. I mean, I've experienced it towards the end of my dissertation deadline and I was going ham with my dissertation. Bear with me here. Here's what I'm suggesting. I think you're not a lazy person. I just think you have a habit of procrastinating because you are addicted to getting that dopamine just before the deadline. And that's when you start focusing on your work. We are all too familiar with that feeling. In order to change this habit of procrastinating, some of the things that I did was that I had a to-do list. So every day I knew exactly what I wanted to accomplish. And I also had a routine of studying or hanging out or going to the gym, check out my day in the life of an engineering student. That's pretty much what I did. And just having a routine will help you um, get through the hard times. And it certainly helped me um, get through the pandemic. Risk isn't just a bad thing, by the way. It can also be a good thing because say, you have a goal, right, that acknowledges the risks of not achieving it, then you will be more motivated, more focused, more disciplined to stay tunnel vision until you achieve but it. But also, if you're giving yourself self-imposed deadlines, something I talked about in a previous video, 
you'll be sure to be working at a consistent pace throughout the whole year and you won't be cramming things last minute. Complexity. Now, complexity is the state of something being complicated. Man, if you're an engineer, everything is complicated, <laughs> right? And that in itself is packed with flow triggers and dopamine. The difference between a good problem solver and a great problem solver is that a great problem solver is more curious about the problem than he is irritated by not finding a solution. For me, if you watched my previous videos on how to take notes during lectures and after lectures, I use the Feynman technique when it comes to studying. That aspect of breaking complex things down into its most simplest form. I don't know why, but I get I get a kick from that. And <laughs> since I'm working on more complex things than more rather mundane and repetitive things, that motivates me to work harder because not everybody has that opportunity to work on these complex challenges. And I feel honored that I get to actually work on that. I like that aspect of constantly learning and improving myself. What about you? Novelty. Now, novelty means something new. Novelty is one of the simplest of flow triggers. Let me give you an example. When I'm studying, right, sometimes I listen to lo-fi beats. Sometimes I listen to jazz. Sometimes I watch anime whilst I'm studying. Or sometimes I just work in complete silence. That novelty of switching things up helped me get through the work that I needed to get done so that my work didn't feel boring obviously in an ideal world you shouldn't be multitasking like that and you should be focused but you know what it is what it is we gotta do what we gotta do and as long as we're getting the work done hey we move pattern recognition dash creativity having a routine like i said before that's pattern recognition i always use the pomodoro technique when i'm studying that's pattern recognition there is a pattern of work that I'm following and there's a pattern to the madness. Depending how I felt, I would do various versions of the Pomodoro technique. Sometimes I do 25 minutes work, five minutes break if I'm feeling like, uh, sometimes if I'm feeling like, yo, um, I wanna get work done, then I'll do 45 minutes work and then 15 minutes break or 10 minutes break. And during my dissertation, there was times where I would be working two to even four hours straight nonstop. It's like you don't even think about the amount of time you work. It's just, you, you just do it. Active recall, that's pattern recognition. The act of trying to recall something and having that aha moment. That's pattern recognition. Say you're doing maths, yeah? A-level maths, uni maths, coding, whatever it is, and you figure out and you identified the patterns. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, didn't we do this in lesson? Oh, there was a formula. There, there was that chain rule. Huh? What's that? That's pattern recognition. Remember in the previous video that I said that I read the summaries and learning objectives before each and every lecture? Ah, that's pattern recognition. If you somehow find a pattern to something or try get into a rhythm or a pattern of working, yeah, Boom, right there. You'll get a lot of dopamine from that. And honestly, you'll just get in the zone and then just work, 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 or just follow. Purpose and clear goals. One of the goals that I had ever since failing year 12 is that I wanted to do well for my A-levels so that I can get myself an engineering degree. And that's something I actually wanted. Now that I've graduated and after a lot of self-reflection and a lot of going back and forth in my own mind, I realized that I want to pursue software engineering and I wouldn't have come to that epiphany if I didn't do well in my degree. During university, however, I didn't have that sort of mission or purpose. And what really motivated me during that time was that I really wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to show them that they didn't come to the UK for no reason. <laughs> Opportunities as an engineer is endless and I know in 5, 10, 20, 30 years that I will have relevant skills. Now I want you to think about your purpose and goals. Let's talk about purpose first. Ask yourself, why are you doing the thing that you're doing? And then take that reason and ask yourself why again and go deeper and deeper and deeper and learn what it is that intrinsically motivates you to get up out of bed. You don't have to have it figured out, but as long as you have a vague idea or maybe what you're doing is because you enjoy what you do, it's a lucrative path or maybe it's aligned with your passions. And I think everyone knows their passions and that's a different type of video, but have a think about what your purpose is and then set goals 
to achieve that purpose. By the way, if you're an engineering student, did you know that the top entrepreneurs are engineers, right? I remember watching this video on YouTube and it gave me so much hope <laughs> for myself. <laughs> and like, it made me like super excited and it made me remind myself that yes, the, 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 the work is solid, the work is hard, but you know what, in the future, the merits. Oh, so have a look at those five flow triggers that I've said in this video. But here is the full actual list for you to think about. Having a look at this list, think about the different ways you can implement them in your own lives. For everybody, it's different. And trust me when I say this, but you do know how to implement them. It just takes that little time to mull over the ideas and to actually think about and actually take action and once you do you'll find yourself focusing on hours on end without like taking breaks and it just yeah time flies the past two videos i've made on this channel talked about how i've been taking notes during the lecture and after my lectures and i hope now that you've reached the end of this video yeah you uh, have you have a better idea on how you can stay focused so you can take those notes and yeah let me know how that goes i hope you're able to stay focused i hope you're able to achieve your goals just how i was able to achieve my 2-1 jeez <laughs> i also want to say hey you're good it's been a while since we had a little catch-up yeah a little, a little a little catch up yeah it's been what two to three weeks into uni now or school oh the new year it's crazy right time flies right oh Hope Freshers was pretty lit, and if you're in, you know, if you're in uni, but if, if you're not, if you're in sixth form, yeah, hope you're adjusting to the new year, and hope, you know what, this year is going to be a good year, yeah? <laughs> I've been working on uh, coding in my spare time, also I've been learning about data structures and algorithms, it's been long, it's a lot, a lot of things that wasn't taught in my degree in order to, for me to be a software engineer, but you know what we move we move and <laughs> it's a lot of work but you know what like i said we move anyway there's a nice little catch up and hope i'll see you next monday safe